Listeners be advised, the Holiloquy podcast discuss matters related to the human experience and many that are sexual in nature. Due to this, some conversations may surround triggering topics such as sexual violence, self-harm, abuse, and much more. Please be advised, a list of crisis and psychological resources will be available in the show notes of this episode. With that said, let's get started with the show. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention please as we go through the following safety instructions. In the event that there is a loss of cabin pressure, oxygen mask will drop from the overhead. Place the mask over your nose and mouth. Breathe normally as oxygen is flowing even if the mask is not in place. Be sure to adjust your own mask before helping others. Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to the Holy Loki Podcast, where we step out and speak on sexuality. This is your favorite host, Vernon T. Scott, also known as Slater Jackson, and for you freaky motherfuckers out there, Sebastian Adams. On today's episode, we're taking off our motherfucking clothes. We're getting our cameras ready. Have to get some good fucking lighting because the fuck. And we're taking news, and then we're sending those news. So that's the conversation. We're talking about sending news, people. And joining me for this conversation is Tyrell. How are you doing today? I am doing well. I'm so glad to be back. Always happy to be here. Yes, yes. So you out here sending news or no? Like, what's up? Oh, <laughs> no, I haven't. You know, I'll send them every once in a while, depending on who it's with. You know, I, I have this thing about sending news. I always feel like, I don't know, it's like ground-based rules that I <laughs> it's like ground-based rules that I have. <laughs> like, I always like people to know, like, my news are always going to be something that you're never going to see my face. Mm-hmm. Because I like plausible deniability, just in yes. case something gets leaked online. Um so even if you know it's me, I can have possible deniability because I'd be like, well, you know, can't see my face, so that ain't me. Exactly. <laughs> you know, that deny, deny. And even if I didn't want to deny, I just like the, I just like the choice that I could deny if I want. <laughs> you know, so one, that's my thing, and then two, I always like for people who I am exchanging news with to recognize like it's an exchange. Like I take people's privacy very seriously, so. If you're not in a space of wanting to sing yourself, I more than likely won't send anything because to me, sending news is kind of like a reciprocal nature, mm-hmm. you know, of something that's like I want to give, but I also want to receive as well. I get that. I know I, I, I have this one rule when it does come to my news, like one, definitely you're not going to see my face. Even the ones that I'm very happy of, and I'm just like, oh, mm-hmm. look at that body. Oh, look at what you mm-hmm. do. Oh, yes. But I'm like, mm, I don't need my face in that. <laughs> but like, exactly. I will cut my face out or just angle the camera in such a way that it's not going to be there at all. Uh, you might see the bottom half of my face. But look, all of my face it's just beautiful i'm just gonna say that so i'm feeling myself but like you might have the bottom portion of my face or something like that maybe a little bit of lips if it's like a frontal picture like showing the tits and everything but i'm not going to have like full face anywhere and i'm not even going to have my face connected with that account if it is like on on the freak account uh, if you know what i look like it's because i sent it to you in a dm that's the only way um I- but like when it comes to engaging with other people, I'm not going to send because I've I've experienced experienced this a lot on most definitely on dating apps and whatnot, where people will want to see my news and they haven't even provided one a conversation, two a face picture, um, sure. and three any kind of expectation of if this is actually going to lead to something. So uh-huh. like for me, I'm not going to just be sending my nude body out to everybody. Like for me. Right. I, I take ownership and have security of my nude images and uh, cool. they are precious to me. So that means if I'm going to reveal that to you, I'm letting you into, you know, my space a little bit. Um, and it's yeah. not that 
I'm uncomfortable with sharing the news or that I'm not willing to share freely. No, it's just that I need to know exactly who I'm sending these to. So if you do not trust me enough to send me like a picture of your face, why should I trust you enough to send you a picture of my body? Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, and people don't really, I I think it's different for everybody, but there are, I think, levels to sending nudes. Like a lot, like I had somebody ask me uh, recently, they noticed that with the news that I chose to share, like, I, I take more pictures like of my backside than I do my front. And so, you know, he wasn't like necessarily complaining or anything like that, but he was just asking, you know, just out of genuine curiosity of why. And I don't know. And, you know, it really made me reflect because, yeah, I do notice, obviously, that I take more pictures of my backside than my front. And in a way, it's kind of like you also have to be conscious about not necessarily not just what nude you take, but your comfortability as well. Because for me, I recognize that, me taking a picture of my like my back my backside because it's like what I find to be more appealing, I guess. It's like I don't have a second thought about taking a picture of my backside. But it's like if I had to, you know, taking pictures of, you know, my frontal area or whatever, I feel in some way more exposed. Mm. Like it's something that, yeah, I'll do, but it takes me a little bit more confidence to do. Mm. And I don't necessarily think it's about size or anything like that personally for me, but I think that, you know, we tend to take, you know, pictures of what we feel like our best, you know, assets are, or, you know, things that, you know, get talked about from people, you know, in a general sense. And even for like content creators that, you know, I'll happen to follow, they'll mention things from time to time as to say like, oh, hey, you know, like, with, like when you see like those dual pictures of like front side, back side. Or, you know, whatever. And then people in the comments will be like, oh, well, you know, would love to see, you know, like this body part or, you know, whatever, you know, or something else from you. And then I don't know, it's kind of like almost like that hesitation because like that's not like usually like what I'm known for, Mm. you know, I I. I like that you mentioned that, you know, people, you know, putting in their request and whatnot. I hate that people feel that they have ownership of what you release Mm -hmm. Uh, because it's like if you're asking for me to share a nude picture and I do share a nude picture and if this is what you want like if it's not what you want to see okay that's fine but if this is all that I'm comfortable with uh, sharing with you then let that be great too because like Mm -hmm. for me like one I don't really I don't necessarily like dick pics like yeah i've seen some great dick pics over the years uh and whatnot but at the end of the day i really don't care for them too much because Mm -hmm. those dick pics can lie very easily like if you want to make your dick seem larger than it is you just go closer to it if you want Mm -hmm. it to not seem as uh large uh even if it is big you go back like the angle can make uh, make a difference. All these things can happen. Like for me, I will always tell people, "Dick pics lie." So, like, it doesn't even tell me how well it's going to perform whenever we do meet up. So it's like it's not really giving me anything. Um, but like, I rarely take pictures of my dick. I rarely even take pictures of my ass. But I Ooh. don't mind taking a picture of my chest because look, that's something easy. That's something that I do mm-hmm. appreciate seeing for myself. Like even when I walk around. Uh, naked sometimes I just like oh look at you okay I'm looking in the mirror I see my front side a lot more than I see my back side anyway so it's like I've grown to appreciate what I see up front but like for people who just feel as though oh um, because we're engaging in these this space of sharing and taking photos oh I want you to go to the bathroom and do this fam Uh we're not in a relationship you can't be making requests are you going to pay me on this like you you're doing too much like what 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 is the expectation here um do you want me to have a photo shoot for you like are you just engaging with me just so that you can see uh, have somebody to engage in your uh photo um I don't want to say fetish but your desire to see all these photos of me Uh, or do you have the intentions of actually meeting up because if you want to meet up you can see everything in person like what is your expectations here like 
Yeah. And then some, yeah. And then that's the thing. Some people don't know how to delineate with the fact that, especially like if you were somebody who particularly is like a content creator for whatever reason, Mm -hmm. like the things that I post are for a public image, but that's not to say like that necessarily spills over into my personal life. Mm -hmm. And because it's like when you're dealing with, you know, fans that you may have or followers that you may have, you don't know them. So, you know, most of them you don't know unless you are being paid to know, you know, being paid to know them. So, like, for instance, and I think that that is what kind of perpetuates a lot of um, stereotypes um, that we have, particularly in our culture, because, like, if you're following this content creator who is known, you know, for, hey, popping, you know, whatever, however, they are very nicely proportioned and they got a good backside, too, then all of a sudden, the comments will not just be about, hey, they performance, but then it's kind of like, oh, well, you know, I see them takes on you, you know, you too, and, you know, things like that, things that they may not, you know, they appreciate maybe, but it's like, that's not what the attention is for. And then now you have these people in your DMs and your comments saying like, oh, you know, like, can we see, you know, like, you know, somebody, you know, playing, with, you know, playing with your backside or, you know, something like that or whatever. And it's kind of like, like you say, it's like, why can't you just enjoy the content that I'm putting out there like it's my content you know so it's like you don't get a license into saying or feeling like you should be privileged to make certain comments Mm -hmm. you know it's kind of like if you're going to comment on something comment on the video or the photo that I just put out that's what you need to comment on exactly like I think a lot of that is rooted in consumerism and how uh, we have that belief that the customer is always right and that we can request whatever we want on the fucking menu. Like, I've been thinking about, like, you know, if I were to start a, 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 a restaurant or something, mm. what that menu is going to look like. Because if I, I know that, you know, people don't want to turn people away, but if it's not something that focuses on a vegan diet or if it's not something that, um, even focuses on uh you know gluten free or whatever the case is then it's just not the restaurant for you like i i don't see why like not to say cuz these things are actual concerns that you do sh- you should have some kind of uh replacement if you can if it fits the theme or whatever the case is mm-hmm. but we have that expectation that this one place has to fit everybody's needs all our needs and all of that and i'm just like why can't they just be a place why is it that burger places have to serve chicken like i I get that you can have a chicken sandwich or whatever like chick-fil-a i'm not going to their them to expect them to have a burger they have chicken let that be the and i love that they stick to that we're not going to do anything else outside of that if it's not chicken if it's not an egg we're not fucking around with it. <laughs> exactly. And there, and that is the reason why multiple uh, places exist. Because it's like, and if you are not happy with my services or our services, you can feel free to go elsewhere. Exactly. Like, this is not like this is the only place there is. Exactly. Like, you know, it's, so. it's not saying that we would not appreciate your business. It's just that we're not serving the dining experience that you want and that is okay yeah. when it comes to content well i'm not serving the content that you are requesting i'm sorry that's like if somebody came to me and like oh well why don't you talk about um politics more or why don't you talk about uh comic books more and i'm like that's not the purpose of the show this show right. is about conversations about sex now if it's a comic book related to sex and i could talk to the author the illustrator the artist i forget what the comic i forget the actual term but i would love to have them on but Mm. if it's not if it's not rooted in the conversations that you know based off of the brand or whatever don't expect it and you have to know what works for you and what you are going to draw boundaries for because like Mm -hmm. there are that there's um to uh there's this youtube couple uh to you know very handsome gentlemen and um, 
when they announce that, you know, because usually like they do like little vlog videos and, you know, like couple videos and, you know, stuff like that. And um, they both of them, real cool personalities from at least what I see or whatever. And then when they announced that they were going to be doing, you know, a little bit more explicit material, I like how they came out in person saying like, you are not going to, you know, necessarily see them, you know, having sex, you know, on camera or, you know, things like that. But they were going to be doing a little bit more like explicit pics and, you know, stuff like that that, you know, as a couple and as separately. So I like how they make their business work for them. Like if you go onto their Twitter page or follow their Twitter, you know, you'll see a photo or two or, you know, something like that, but you're not going to see like their OnlyFans account. The Holiloquy podcast focuses on the variability of sexual expression. When it comes to sexual expression, we often depend on pornography to illustrate how one must perform sexually. For those who have not learned this by now, the stuff you see in porn is not real. Pornography provides a singular perspective of sexual expression that is not often the reality we see during our own sexual encounters. The Holiloquy Podcast is a conversation that takes you outside of the compressed box of what many know about sex. Some of the topics we discuss include kinks, condom usage, status disclosure, and past sexual experiences. The Holiloquy Podcast steps out on sexual norms and recognizes that the norm is not the only normal. Subscribe today and join the conversation. So I like how they make their business work for them. Like if you go onto their Twitter page or follow their Twitter, you know, you'll see a photo or two or, you know, something like that, but you're not going to see like their only fans account and then that's another and then that's another thing a lot of times people will feel like because i know i'm I, I i'm one of these people myself i for as much free content that is out there i'm not going to pay for content hmm. if it gets to that point that i do then that will be that but i don't pay for content but that doesn't mean that i disrespect or bash people you know people who do or you know i talk badly about people on their page or whatever but there's a misconception about the fact that as soon as people hear that, oh, you have a OnlyFans or you have a Just For Fans or what, you know, whatever platform people are using, they automatically assume that they're going to be seen, you know, just engaging, you know, sexual content. And that is not the truth. People use their Just For Fans, their OnlyFans to up their brands as well. And considering how much uh, freak meters that you know people have out here what people are into you could make a thousand of dollars just by showing your foot online mm-hmm. <laughs> you know so it's like people make their brands work for them like there is a guy who is called the naked chef you know he make he's building his content and his brand based off the nature of him cooking naked and, you know, he has a bad following. The Naked Barber does, you know, the same thing. And so I think that it goes back into the conversation, like, with the nature of sending nudes. You have to know, like, what are you actually – it shouldn't be just, like, oh, okay, I'm sending this just for fun. But you have to think about, okay, what's the other reasons why I may be doing this? Am I doing this, you know, as, like, a confidence builder or because am I trying to look for some sort of validation? And so, and you know, it's not necessarily to say all those things are bad. Like, hey, there may be a time, you know, maybe sometimes where, you know, I'm just, I'm feeling myself right now. So, you know, mm-hmm. I may send, you know, a couple pics or, you know, whatever. Or, you know, hey, I'm really wanting to get insight into, like, this part of my body, maybe because I've been working out, you know, of it. And so my thing has always been, as long as, you know, you're not sharing your entire self to the world to see, I guess. And that's not that's not a dig at content creators because I very much benefit from content creators. But it is to say, like, you have to choose the levels of intimacy, even with just a picture that you share. And I'm so glad that people are now starting to have those boundaries and people are starting to have those conversations because the truth of the matter is, and I've been talking about this a lot quite lately, not everybody deserves access to you. Mm. Amen. You know, you do not owe people your the entire nature of your body or just things that you choose not to show. If I don't like the way my arm looks, well, guess what? God damn it. I'm not going to show my arm. <laughs> and I don't care what it is that you say. You know, so, you know, just get, get, get it together.
Like, I know, like, even when it comes to, like, me sending news, I use my, I can't say it's a disdain because I don't mind taking a picture if I'm in the mood. Um, Like, I really do have to be in the mood to take, like, new pictures, like, meaning I've come off a good little vacation or uh, it has not been a stressful week. I haven't been Mm -hmm. working nonstop. Like, sometimes, look, I'm not feeling up to it. And, and, like, when it comes to those moments I am in the mood and I do take a new photo, um, I, I want my news to be appreciated. I want the person who receives them to like enjoy what I'm sending them. And uh, I want it to make them actually feel more enticed to meeting up and engaging in my body and appreciating me a lot more. But because of, um, that mindset that I have when it comes to my news, I often utilize that to help me weed out those people who are not going to appreciate me the way I want Mm. to, because you can tell a lot, most definitely if someone is just like constantly like, oh, so are you going to send me a nude? And I'm like, are you going to send me a face Mm -hmm. pic? And then they're just like, yeah, I'll do that after you send a nude. And I'm like, then I'm not interested. Like, (laughs) so. Yeah, because for one thing, because for one thing, it's kind of like, it's majorly sus about the fact that you keep asking, you know, for this, because it's kind of like, even if, like, for people who I converse with, I'll be like, yeah, I have an appreciation for the body. Like, I love the body. And for me, sending news is just not about seeing particular body parts or whatever. I just have a general appreciation for the body. Mm-hmm. So I love to, you know, I love looking at different skin, skin tones, different sizes, different, you know, because then I fascinate I fantasize about what it's like what you know your touch feels like like you know and things like that so it it arouses you know all of those senses for me and so when people message you or is to say like oh like like you said oh like can we exchange or you know and like you don't even know this person from Adam (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know and so it's, it's very much a thing about like and that's why how you say, like, you can weed out certain people because it's kind of like, listen, if all I'm wanting, you know, is to see the news or whatever, I'm not going to be putting in this much work just to see just to see your news. Exactly. Like, you know, so I think it's kind of one of those things that it's sad, but it's a it's a very good indicator. Mm-hmm. No, that's like uh, on on Grinder. Um, they allow you to send disappearing photos, and you only if you are not paying. I don't know how many you get if you do pay, but if you're not paying, you are, have a limit of one disappearing photo. So mm-hmm. if um someone sends me a dis- disappearing um um face pic, um uh, I will probably send them a disappearing ass fo- ass pic. But mm-hmm. the only thing um. Uh, is that if I don't have any more of those and I already, you know, shot that load earlier that day with somebody mm. who ended up not working out and you're messaging me and it's like, you send a disappearing photo, I'm just going to tell you, okay, I appreciate knowing how you look, but I, I'm i not going to send you a nude. Like, I, the conversation will already be there that I'm not going to send a nude, even like it's not going to be yeah yeah and and you and do not apologize for the fact that you know somebody may send you you know a picture without like you expressing like i didn't ask you to send that in the first place so don't feel compelled that you have to send something back exactly like yeah because i've had incidences like that to happen where it's like somebody will just send me just like some random picture and i'm just like oh okay Mm -hmm. like yeah okay it looks nice like there was this uh, one incident where um, someone, I, I think I hit them up and we were just having conversation. Uh, they were visiting the area and um, they were like, well, I was like, hey, I'm looking for a hookup tonight. Are you interested? They was like, um, yeah. And I was like, do you mind sending a, a face pic? They sent the face pic. I was like, oh my God, you were trying to blah, 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 blah. And uh, I think at this point, I had already sent like uh, my new <laughs> as a disappearing photo, so I didn't have one. <laughs> and he sent the disappearing photo, so I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to help you here. But he was like, oh, so are you going to send me a new photo? I was like, you know, I'm of the mindset that uh, if you really want to see my ass, you will actually come over and you will want to fuck. Um, like, yeah. if you're not on that energy, then you don't really want to see my new body. So uh, I'll, after that, it was like, bet. I, yeah. Like, that was all that was needed to be said. <laughs> 
And I will say I was happily folded in a good way that night. And it was great. But like, that's the kind of energy I be looking for when it comes to these dating apps. Like, I want you to have the full intentions that look, I already find you attractive. Oh, uh-huh. you say you're not going to send a new, but you saying I could still come over and see that body or I could still fuck around with you. I want this. I want you. I'm going to uh-huh. see you in a little bit. If you're not on that, you mess with the wrong motherfucker. Because like, <laughs> mm-hmm. my desire to send a new varies day to day. So Yeah, no. And then you also have to really assess about whether or not you're in the mood or not. Because like I've had many, I've had like quite a few incidents where it's like somebody will hit you up just at the wrong time. Where it's like, listen, I didn't just like wash my face. I didn't got into bed. I didn't, you know, I didn't brush my teeth. I'm getting ready to settle in for the night. And then like, you know, you may be, you know, there's a difference between engaging in, you know, like sexy combo versus like taking a photo. Because then it's like, listen, I'm already in bed. My light is out. I sleep in the dark. Now I got to turn on the light. Now I got to get in a position. <laughs> like, this is too much work. So I, I think that with the nature of sending news, like, and I, I think that there was this, um, I re- believe like there was this article titled like sending, like taking news as an art. Mm-hmm. And I remember in that article, I remember this woman said that, think about taking news as a way to build, not necessarily just confidence in yourself, but to focus news on yourself. Do them when you're in the moment to do them. Mm-hmm. Do them when you feel great about doing them. Don't do them just for the, obviously, for the pleasure of others, because you're not getting any type of satisfaction of that. All you're doing is just taking a picture of your body just to satisfy someone else. Be empowered about the photos that you take. No matter if you're no, you're taking something that is like has the best lighting or whatever, or you're just taking a shot that of you know you just getting out the shower or something, whatever, whatever it is. Like do it when you are feeling most empowered, not because it's like when somebody wants something. That's why a lot of times when I am sending news, I, I will preface like, oh, like I took this like maybe like two weeks ago. Because, like, I'm not in the mood or I may not be in the space to take, like, an actual mood right now. <laughs> you know, the crazy thing is, uh, because I don't really take too many nudes, like, I have, like, newer frontals or even, cool. like, you see the, like, the pic- the images that I post every now and again, like, on Instagram my Facebook or uh, sometimes Twitter, uh, like if I update my picture, like the one with me in that um, mm. that see through shirt, because uh, mm. um, I love that one. Like I was feeling good, I was feeling myself tonight. Yes, I, I also had a Sebastian photo shoot thing going on that day too. But anyways, uh, I was feeling good. Like that's the kind of things that I like to take. Like the black and white model steps out of me, and I'm just like, yes, bitch, yes. It's not gonna be in full color because it looks by god good as fuck in full color but you're gonna get this black and white today but like i'm feeling myself i'm feeling great so that is when i'm going to take a a photo of myself but i'm Mm -hmm. not doing those kind of pictures of my full nude body because i don't if this is not enticing enough for you and it's Mm -hmm. not making you want to rip this shirt off then why pull the fuck up (laughs) Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I want I want you to lust after the thing that you see publicly rather than the thing that you may have access to like mm. privately as a like you know a nude photo right but, like yeah you, you have to feel sexy with your news and right you yeah. And I think there, that's uh-huh. yeah and that's the thing like I think the nature of taking news is getting into that that era of because like it's like I see like a lot of news and I'm like oh my god like this is a whole production going on like Mm -hmm. and it makes you feel it makes you feel sexy because when I'm looking at people who like I know that they didn't just like quickly take this picture like they have like this lingerie on they have this like environment or this background like they chose to take this picture at a specific moment and it makes me so like somehow appreciate the photos a lot more because of the work that's been put in it and it's not to say like if you don't do that like you're you know like your needs are trash or whatever but I think like moving forward I think that I'll be in a more of a space like when I do take news like I am getting into like different types of stylish like 
lingerie or underwear or you know things like that where it's like oh yeah I can really see myself like wearing this and like taking a picture or you know I would love to take a picture at sunrise or sunset and capture you know this kind of lighting because that's what makes me feel good exactly like literally in this moment I'm thinking of different nude photo shoots that I can do because like if I had the space the time and the money oh my god like I will do a whole fucking design and just be like I do, you know, I it, it, I don't know if it's going to happen. I would hope, um, I don't know, because it's like the way finances work and things like that, you know, it can always be up and down. I always wanted to, because this is my 30th year, you know, for my birthday this year. So I was actually really hoping that I would actually have enough coin to actually schedule myself to actually take a sexy photo shoot for my 30th birthday. You know, that's what I'm doing. That is literally what I'm doing. I thought I sent in the message on the second of this year, hmm. but I surely didn't. I had to, I went back to the website. I'm like, why is she not reaching out to me? Like, I, girl, right. what's going on? I'm getting anxious here. Like, do you not, do you not accept people? Like, what's going on? How do I reach what's out to you? On? And I didn't even press submit, fam. I was just like, the fuck is wrong oh, with no. you? <laughs> so I was just like, let me just go ahead and put a cap on this little um, email message. Send, submit, submit, submit. And now I'm submit. just like, girl please just go ahead and reach out I to need me you to however you need to um like i t- look i look at my spell messages well, just in case if it's going to be well, sent there i'm looking for you <laughs> look because it's like look i'm having my glow up i'm having like my self-confidence this is not to say like this is going to be here in another year like i may be going through something entirely different exactly so I need, I exactly need to, i need to, to capture this energy okay <laughs> A picture captures a moment. In this moment, I'm feeling great. So go ahead. (laughs) This is going to be the staple for the rest of the uh, this damn year. That's all I know. And that's why. And that's why. Even though I do not dress in heels, I truly understand why a lot of a lot of women who do wear heels say that no, I need to capture these moments in these heels before we go out. Because once I go out, I ain't walking. (laughs) Look. And not at all. <laughs> I, no, like I told, I I get, I get it. Look now, um, I will say because uh, we have not touched base on this. Well, I kind of mentioned it a little bit earlier, but in terms of news, body appreciation. So, yeah. how how do you? either if it's before prepping for uh, a new photo that you're going to take, or even just in general, how do you appreciate your body? How do you see your body? And how do you prep your body for any kind of photos? Mm. Well, I think you have you have to know, like, your features and what, like, the, the accentuation of what comes to you naturally. Like, I don't think that you should feel like, oh, like, I have to do this or I have to do that before new, but I know what makes me feel good. I've always been into sensuality. I love, you know, I love my candlelight baths. I love my body products that I use. So anytime that you, typically a lot of times before I will take a new, it's usually after I have bathed, I have applied, you know, my, my body products, because that's when I feel the most sexy. And so, like, a lot of times I will take pictures, like, after I have the lotion or, you know, like I say, apply my body products and I'll take a picture of, like, my backside, my front side or, like, my feet or, you know, whatever, because it's like I'm in the moment. I feel confident. I've had my candles on. So, you know, I feel sexy and, you know, just all those type things. So that's just personally for me. If you have a different type of regimen or routine, do what works for you, of course. And so in those moments, you know, I, I'm appreciating my body because it's where I feel the most confident. Now, I will say, like, a lot of people will have the thing of, well, I don't know what makes me feel confident about my body, especially if you struggle through um, body image, um, you know, um, problems or if you've had yeah, because I think we, I think a lot of us, we go through a kind of body appreciation and body dysmorphia at the same time. Because, you know, just because you see somebody who is all, you know, in the gym and they have these six pack abs and stuff like that, they are some of the most body conscientious people, you know, that are out there. So it's definitely not even to stigmatize. Um, and so I think, you know, just like anything, we fall in love and out of love with our bodies. Mm-hmm. And so, I think that what you have to do and understand is how take assessment about how you come to appreciate 
um, aspects of you that, hey, you may actually still want to change, but it's to say, like, if you are used to, just to give an example, if you are used to having a certain type of body image, like, hey, you're used to being a little bit more muscular or, you know, toned and things like that, just ask yourself this question. If I was to have more flab or, you know, like, or a little bit bigger in certain places and things like that, would that, you know, how what does that actually, would that actually change anything about how people perceive me or how I perceive myself? Mm -hmm. Because to me, no matter if I am bigger, if I'm thinner or, you know, whatever, and a lot of times we're bigger and thinner in certain places, you know, just depends on your body proportion, that that still doesn't change anything, you know, about me inside. Yeah, my outside, you know, has changed a little bit. But that's why it's like even with getting to know people, why I've often always said, like, I really don't care what size people are. I just want you to be healthy, mm -hmm. whatever healthy looks like for you. You know, so I would never project a ideal body type or ideal onto somebody because, one, a lot of times we don't understand that. A lot of times what happens with our bodies are genetic you know, especially for if you come from a genetically bigger family, you're just predisposed to be genetically bigger, a bigger person. It doesn't matter about what you do at the gym and things like that. A lot of times what happens at the gym and you eating right and things like that, that has a effect on other aspects of your body, but not necessarily the outwardly mm -hmm. appearance of you, you know. Um, and again, you know, all those types of other things. But yeah, but just getting back to the nature of just body appreciation Whatever it is that you have discomfort with, I always say, take pictures of that. Mm. Examine why you actually have discomfort about it. I used to have discomfort about the nature of uh, stretch marks on my backside. Now, mind you, I have stretch marks on my arms and other parts of my body. But when I started taking photos for the first time, I had to really ask myself, why do I not care about having stretch marks on other parts of my body? But I don't care. Like, I have a gripe or I have some sort of feelings about them being on my backside. And with people who I would share nudes with, that would always be one of the highlights. They would be like, oh my God, like I love them tiger stripes. I love them stretch marks. And I would, it would almost be like, a, I'm like, are people like that? Like, are they gaslighting me, mm -hmm. like me or something? Because it's like people will appreciate and see things in you that you don't see. And it's not coming from a devious or, you know, a gaslighting type place, but you know, certain things that you don't necessarily like, other people may like, mm -hmm. you know. And, of course, it's not saying, you know, to do things for the benefit of others, but just know that people will have different appreciations of you. And so that's why it's always good to just learn all, love, learn to love all of you. Exactly. And I, like, I know, like, um, like, one of the things that I actually do plan on doing for, like, phase three of the sexual exploration uh, journals. And the next one is actually going to be focusing on the body, finding ways to appreciate your body in the way that it looks and stuff like that. I might even have some additional activities for people to do. I don't know. It's still in the, in the works, people. Look, it's January. I know it's going to be April when you hear this, or actually it might be later than that. It might be May. <laughs> Who knows <laughs> when you hear this episode. But like, uh, a part of that is helping people to appreciate their bodies a lot more because I remember those days when I didn't like looking at myself in the mirror and I used to love myself and that's a crazy thing like throughout my adolescent life uh, I just was like oh my gosh you're such a beautiful guy I love me I love me for who I am and all these other things other people who don't like me fuck them uh, I didn't cuss back then but anyways <laughs> It is their problem, not my problem. But somewhere along the line, I allow society in all of the hateful and mean things that's often been said about big people to make me no longer appreciate my body or make me love my body and how it was developing. So I began to see myself as fatter than I was. I became a lot more depressed. All these things happened. And then, you know, I ended up joining a frater fraternity i lost a lot of weight uh everybody's like complimenting how good i look now and all this other stuff and i realized i don't like the way i look anymore like i didn't like that new so, me that I became because 
it didn't feel like myself. It didn't feel comfortable for me. I didn't feel beautiful, even though other people were commenting on how great I looked. I just felt more of the norm at that time. And not to say that I purposely gained weight, because that definitely didn't happen. Look, stress does a lot to your body, people. Oh. Uh, and like you said, genetics and all these other things that impact your um, weight gain, weight loss, and whatnot. But it wasn't, it was the process of me going through all those stressful situations and relearning to love myself where I was able to get to a point where I actually appreciated myself. And I will say, even these days, um, the thing that really helps me appreciate my body, like the preparation that I go into that, happens whenever I'm trying a new outfit for the Sebastian persona or something I might want to wear just to feel sexy. That includes putting on these lacy outfits, um, the some pants or even some underwear that I found that are made of lace fabric, like just that process of putting these things on, putting my smell goods on, um, putting on the Sebastian, Sebastian mask. It's just like, oh my gosh, I just feel great in this. I feel uh -huh. sexy. Like one of the um, parts of my body that I really do love other than my smile is my eyes. Like if my eyes are not giving me fucking sexy, the picture needs to be taken down. Uh -huh. Like I don't care what the fuck all my hands and body is looking like. If my eyes are not where I want them to be, if it's not giving, that's a sexy ass motherfucker looking at you and looking right back at me, then I'm not going to take that picture. That That's not the case. Uh -huh. I need to be like, when I look at this picture, Paz Vernon is making love to President Vernon as I'm looking at him look in this photo. Because if, yeah. if I, look, if I'm not loving myself, <laughs> mm -hmm. when I look back, and, it's not it's not hitting. And in between that past and that present, it's a whole orgasm that's happening. Like, look, rest assured, it, you know. Listen, you know. let them know, let them know. <laughs> But you know, but I also think that we also have to, again, it's about the language that we use, because I know that we, we get into a lot of prevalent conversations about the things about body image, you know, that we get come from TV, they come from being online for social media and content creators. And, you know, the thing that I do like is I do like that there is this prevalence, especially with being on Twitter or, you know, other places where content creators are a, a lot of times prevalent. I do like that there are, you know, this outpouring love for people of, you know, bigger communities and things like that. But the one thing that I don't necessarily appreciate is like, let's not stigmatize people who have bigger bodies as the other. Mm. As to say like, well, maybe there's an opposite thing that happens where people of bigger communities that you know, love, what other body types do they love? You know, but it's kind of like, that's a different, difficult conversation to have because muscular people or thinner people, they've never been categorized as the other. Mm -hmm. So it's like, we'll never have those conversations because we they've never been the other. But what I do think we need to change about the language as well is that recognize if you are engaging in something as far as just sexual play then that then you have to know and understand that that is what people will see you for and use you as a classic example if you are a bigger person do not delude yourself into thinking that just because I may be with this muscular man or this thinner man they may have love for bigger for bigger men but just because you do something with somebody in private doesn't mean that they will claim you in public. Mm -hmm. So let's not, you know, so I'm not saying that, you know, that's for every case. But what I am saying is recognize when to set boundaries and be able to emotionally detach from the things that you do in private with somebody to do things in public. Because just because you may be seeing, you know, this person, you know, who may have this athletic body and, you know, things like that. Just because they like to be with bigger people or, you know, things like that, you know, sexually doesn't mean does that, you know, just to ask yourself the question like, OK, yeah, they're doing this with me in private, but would they ever claim me in public, mm -hmm. you know, as somebody and you will recognize a lot of body shaming that that you know tends to happen now hey of course if you're in the space of you know you just trying to get yours and have fun by all means do whatever makes you feel good but I think the nature of body appreciation starts by stop attaching yourself to 
to messages that you have previously received about the body. Exactly. You know, and know the difference between when you are being sexualized and when you are being appreciated. Mm-mm-mm. You know. That's going to be the last word of that conversation because you said what needed to be said. And I hope anyone who heard that, regardless of your body type or whatnot, think about that in your intimate spaces. Is this person going to claim me out in public? If they not, act accordingly. <laughs> I'm not saying you have to let them go, but recognize what that relationship is and act uh-huh. accordingly. Um, but yes, on that note, I have a sex question. So we're not going to do not Never Have I it. Ever. We're not doing Would You Rather. This is going to be it's a triple S rated question for you. All so, right. What is your ultimate sexual fantasy and have your sexual fantasies changed over time? Mm-hmm. Ooh, interesting. So I think my, okay, so I'm not going to say it's the ultimate sexual fantasy, but it's something that I actually recently learned after attending a kind of BDSM one-on-one workshop uh, that I would actually have a fantasy of doing a type of role play of like a teacher student, you know, kind of role play scenario. Uh, It was very interesting, very quick story. I learned from uh, my workshop that um, from the person who was conducting the workshop, she was saying that a lot of times role play can be hard for people to get into because they see it as just something that is just they're supposed to stay in the fantasy. And so, as she was saying, role play doesn't necessarily have to involve cosplay, you know, cos- uh, costume play for people who are unfamiliar. You don't necessarily have to have a Batman and Robin, you know, kind of like fantasy that you play out. She And I liked how she put it is that if you think about role play, role play can simply be something that you would not necessarily do in a real life scenario, but you can fantasize it in your mind and play it out with intimate partners. And that immediately made me think of teacher and student because I am a teacher. And of course, I would never cross, and even though I teach in a collegiate setting, I would never cross boundaries, of course, with a student. But in my private and personal life, yeah, I can have intimate fantasies about, oh, like this is a teacher student, you know, dynamic or scenario that gets played out. So that would be a, a fantasy that I have. Mm-hmm. And um and yeah, I can definitely say that fantasies have definitely changed over time. I think when I was first starting to learn about sex, I had those typical, you know, fantasies about like, oh, like I would love to like have sex on the beach and you know, just all those things. And then I recognized, well, for one thing, um, if I was actually in that scenario. I don't care if all this sand getting in crevices mm-hmm. and places. And then I'm like, if something washes shores, like I, I can't swim. And even though I wouldn't be all the way in the water, like that would be a prime distraction, you know? So I'm like, well, maybe like a little nice jacuzzi would settle, you know, or something like that. But you know, yeah. And so, and, but then I'm like, well, depending on how clean it is, you know, because I am, because, you know, I do have some sanitary concerns and stuff. So it's like, you know, certain fantasies, like you think, because like you've seen it in TV, you've seen it in movies, or, you know, you've seen it in your favorite porn or, you know, whatever. And then when you stop to think about it, it's like, uh, maybe we need to adjust this vision. Or- <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, I, okay, I definitely have a follow up with the role play situation. Uh, uh, first, I need to say one thing, and then I'm going to say mine, and then the role play thing. So, okay. everybody, just a reminder sand is glass, glass is sand. So, take that how you will when it comes to having sex on the motherfucking beach. Sand is glass, and glass is sand. Leave it at that. Like, no. <laughs> like, I thought about that, it, but the, yeah, I have the thoughts about, okay, the crevices. What if sand gets somewhere I don't want it to be at? To be, right. And, and I'm not trying to be torn up on the inside. I'm just right. not. No. It, I know some people find that phrasing sexy, like tear my insides up. I get that, you know, right. but not literally. I'm not. Mm-mm. Right. Sand is glass and glass is sand. And for people who have sensitive skin like myself, don't mess your skin up. Exactly. Mm-mm. We're not, right. don't mess your skin up. We're no. not doing that. We are not yeah. doing that. Now, yeah. my ultimate 
sexual fantasy is and it has been since i was young and it will still be until that motherfucker happens and that is having sex in zero motherfucking gravity bitch like i want to be on a spaceship fucking like no motherfucking other thing is look listen here elon musk i know i don't like your bitch ass (laughs) and or jeff bezos i don't like you either if y'all could set some shit up and I could go ahead and bring a couple of my sexual partners with me and we just float up there for like a few hours, like I mean a few hours, because the shit that I want to do with zero gravity may take a few oh. hours. Look, start- look, ha- hashtag intergalactic sex. Like, Listen, you know, that's going to be the name of the episode. Look at that. <laughs> hashtag intergalactic sex. Like, let's get it. Let's get let's it because get it. like I'm trying to get some shit started. Oh, like don't look. I understand the funds are not there, but y'all got it for everybody on this damn planet. Take me to look. If if mm. do you think about like the level of creativity? Because like if you have a zero gravity, like you don't, you're not gonna have like that gravitational pull. So you just gonna be up in the air. Like you can get, like you can practice like different positions from the look, air. Like I'm it could be a whole be... I'm trying to be like fucking, and we are spinning like a motherfucking wheel, bitch. Like. Yeah. Let's look. Do a backflip on some. Look, let's. There's so much shit that I want to do. <laughs> like, I love it. I, I, love it. I will. I'm even willing to have sex with Jeff Bezos uh, if if I can a- accomplish that. I was going to say Elon Musk, but I still can't do it. I barely can do Jeff, but it's like at least when it came around those news at one point, he uh-huh. did provide like some. BDE mm-hmm. and he was like bitch just post them and I was like Ooh, yeah. oh okay I, okay yeah. we might we might could get some shit off but Elon Musk I'm sorry uh uh-uh, uh no yeah, now I if don't. it's if it's his Asian twin I, look I will stay wow. on that for a while he can be there he can be there mm-hmm. let's invite let's invite him onto this and, that, and just because, <laughs> and just because you may have to do something to get through it doesn't mean you can't have masks you can have other equipment like there's ways to get through it. There's ways to get through this. Like, look, I might if I have to have sex with Elon Musk, just dope me up during that process and let that be the last person I'm having sex with. Okay, that's that's all I'm saying. But that's so disrespectful, and I don't care, y'all. I'm sorry. I should not be bashing these people, but they they billionaires. They can afford feelings. So if they need something, they could buy some new feelings. Mm-hmm. Fuck them. I said what I said. Yeah. <laughs> we're not in the bit. We're not in the business of rich people's of rich white men's feelings. Like you know, not at all. Not at all. I just like and that's not from I subscribe to. <laughs> Exactly. Now, in terms of this role play situ- uh, scenario, and we are te- technically over time, but I'm still we we good. But look, with the role play scenario, I actually participated in a role play, and I was the dom in the situation. And mm-hmm. the crazy thing is, the person who, so I'm not going to tell the entire story, but let's say this happened on. Uh, on like a Tuesday, how me and this other dude met, and somehow by twelve o'clock that night, somebody else got involved. And um, like a couple hours before we were actually going to engage in all of this, another person wanted to take part, but I was like, no, it's too complicated mm. to be adding other people in here. Like, this oh, has no. been like a good sixteen hours of communication between these three parties. But <clears throat> essentially, the scenario was uh, and for people who do not know i used to act back in the day so like me and role play it brought back my acting roots but with um with this scenario the person wanted to be kidnapped and uh of course i'm not lifting the motherfucker to, since we're doing this in my apartment i'm not going to allow you motherfuckers to break any of my shit trying to pick somebody up so we're not doing that but we set up the scene and everything communicated what's the name of this business what are we going to be calling you what are the uh we talked about the color scheme or in terms of red yellow and green just to make sure how everybody checks in even had a code phrase of how to check in during the scene too so like Mm -hmm. since it's a kidnap scenario and uh i wanted to know how he he was doing the Mm. code word for how you're doing in that scenario was what's your social security number because we're Mm -hmm. robbing him we're trying to take all his money and all his other stuff but that gives us a check-in of green yellow red you know that kind of Mm -hmm. thing how you check in without having to check in 
Right. But yeah, if you get the chance to do it, I hella recommend. Um, make sure if um, you do partake, um, most definitely if it's um, like everybody's new to it, or if not everybody's new to it, like one person's been involved, but at least communicate roles, um, yeah. the storyline, and that makes it so much easier for everybody to engage. Like yeah. me and the other dude, we like literally built a company and all this shit before the other guy came in and I just had to let him know look, this is what's happening. We're disgruntled employees. We're getting our money back and we gonna, you know, fuck the shit out of him until he gives us the money, gave the code words and all this other stuff. But it turned out really great. Everybody mm. was hella satisfied. So, yeah. Ooh, wonderful. Oh, wonderful. I love it. Do it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it is worth doing. Um. So yeah, what is your scenario? I know it's teacher student, but what? Oh well, you know the thing is that uh, I would actually want to. I, even though, like, when I took like my initial like BDSM test, like I had that um very like versatile aspect of actually being a switch. Mm-hmm. You know, so being dominant and submissive. But I think for like the few like role plays or like the fantasies that I have, like. I would actually want to take on that dominant persona because mm-hmm. of the fact like there's a lot what I've been learning is over the past year is that there's actually a lot of sensuality that can be involved in BDSM. So I'm not necessarily into impact play or, you know, like things that are involving pain or things like that, but I'm very much into sensual play. And so with the nature of teacher student, I would love to not necessarily have that classic, like, oh, I'm at the board and, you know, like, I'm about to discipline a student or anything like that. Mm-hmm. To me, like, that's, that's like lame or something. But I would love to have a scenario where it's like, I would be like in my office type space or, you know, like to have like a desk and to have this role play play out of this student who is coming to me and they're needing like this extra help or this extra attention. And it's a whole entire buildup of a scene and not even necessarily clearing the desk, but um, to, again, like just have this kind of build up where it's like we're we almost do something and then we don't. And then the next time you see us like that student is revealing, you know, like their body more and like their body more and more. So there's like this continuous story because y- y'all know I'm a writer out here. So, you know, I don't like to just get to like the immediate action. I like a storyline and a build up with it, which it so so every, so every time it gets a lot more and more intense until it just happens. <laughs> Sir, this is giving, this scenario is going to be happening over multiple motherfucking days, and I am here for this shit. It's just like, oh yes. my god. Oh, that's like, so I'm a, I, I'm like a huge fan of delayed gratification, and I, some people call it edging too, but I think of edging when it comes to mas- um, masturbation. But oh. When it comes to that, that's all I'm getting. It's like, oh, I'm going to get you to this peak. We're not going to break the taboo. We're not going to get into the full thing of what we're actually supposedly supposed to be engaging in in this encounter. But it's all good. We'll 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 get that tomorrow. Oh, wait, we're not there yet. Day number three, we fuck it. (laughs) So I fucks with it. I fucks with it. But I love it. I know I'm over time and I do apologize for that but Tyrell do you have any last words that you would like to share with the audience oh Jess um, as we have centered our conversation around nudes again Jess remember taking nudes is for you not for other people who you choose to share that with is completely up to you let it come from a place of power and confidence um, and just, you know, hey, if you're thinking about any type of kink, any type of fetish, do not, um, do not just delve into it. There is a whole art to the BDSM community. There is a whole art to, um, role play. There's a lot that goes into it. So it's not something that you just do on a fly or do on a whim. There's a lot of moving pieces to it that you have to educate yourself and to know about. And that is the reason why great research is out here. Like people, if you are interested 
interested in something, do the research. Like, it's very fun. It's very fun to actually read up on things that you have a genuine interest about. So don't just dive head first into things because that's how mistakes and accidents happen. Exactly. So. Exactly. And also, make sure y'all go back, listen to those episodes of the Holiloquy Podcast. Take what you can. If you, uh, like, there's always some gems dropped. So, mm-hmm. look, do what you got to do. Um but Tyrell, thank you so much. Uh, you are a wonderful person. I greatly appreciate you for coming on to the podcast. Thank um, you always appreciate being here. <laughs> to the audience, thank you all so much for listening to the Holy Liquid Podcast, where we step out and speak on sexuality. Just in case no one else told you this today, you are beautiful, you are worthy of happiness and joy, you are enough and did some. You may not live up to the expectations of others, but that is okay. You are only required to walk in your own shoes. May each day you live lead you towards abundance. With that said, love you all and see you next episode. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Holiloquy Podcast, where we step out and speak on sexuality. You can subscribe to the podcast through your favorite podcasting app and find us on the web at www.holiloquy.com. That's www.h-e-a-u-x-l-i-l-o-q-u-y.com. Share the podcast with your friends and join the conversation. <laughs>